Hey, what's up everybody? Charles Maring here. And today in the art studio, I want to talk about some non-destructive image editing software called Luminar 2018 that's gaining in popularity from a company called Skylum. We're going to talk about it a little bit and take you through some of the basics and essentials. But first, let's roll that intro. <laughs> So yeah, so many cool image editing apps on tablets and phones these days, but as a professional photographer, I need to be able to edit raw files and be able to work on a desktop so I can get lots of, sometimes hundreds or thousands of images processed and out to my clients. Luminar 2018 is quickly becoming one of my favorite non-destructive image editing softwares. I'm gonna take you through some of the basics and essentials today get you up and running and started on how to understand this piece of software and we'll walk through a photograph and process it together so that I can share some of the basics and essentials and some of the mindset behind what I go through and what I think about as I process my photographs to deliver them to clients. So let's go over to the computer, get started. So yeah, Luminar 2018. This is a really cool, intense piece of software. As we open it up here, you're gonna see we can batch process files. Today, we're just gonna do a simple open and go through some of the basics. So I'm gonna open one single image that I've already put in a folder here. And this is a photograph for celebrity party planner, David Tutera. This was his personal wedding. Uh, and it needs some enhancement. We'll talk about what I did, how I captured it, and what, it, what I need to do to get it ready for delivery. Um, and I photographed this in RAW on a Lumix GH5, uh, one of my favorite cameras. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you some of the tools and, and things that are in the software first. Now, if we come up here, chances are, if you opened up Luminar for the first time, you saw some presets down below. And these are certainly options for processing files, not something that I generally turn to very often. But as you can see, we can actually click on a preset and then just pull the amount back and it will fade the amount of that preset. Since I don't really use the presets that much, we're just gonna close them out and get, it, get, get them out of our way. Up here in the upper right, there's two tabs. One is your preset panel down below. We'll just close that off. On the right here, we have our side panel. We're gonna wanna keep that open because we're gonna be working on the image. Up here we have tools, the simplest, simplest things, your crop, your transforms, clone and stamp, eraser tool. Then we have our history uh, tool here. This is our history tab. We can go back to the original, which we need to do. If we had applied anything that we did not want to apply, we could also hit Command Z, which is kind of like undo in history. So you can do that as many times as you need to, to get back to normal. We can see our image uh, before and after here as well. Lots of other tools, zoom in, zoom out for our own uh, personal editing pleasure there. So on the right hand side is our develop module. This is how we're gonna process our raw file. And this is always open for me because I am generally want to adjust all of my basic exposures. Let's go through them. There's the adjust uh, tab, which allows us to adjust exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity here in subtle increments. We can also adjust color temperature. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. There are also tabs for lens distortion adjustments, uh, transforming vertical and horizontal for making adjustments as well. Great for architecture if you need to straighten buildings, things of that nature. So let's go back to adjust. That's our basic raw develop module here. And down below raw develop, you're gonna see some other options here. These are called filters. So the filters are always placed below your raw develop module here. I don't need these, these are from a past project. So I'm gonna close them out. And the way we do that, number one, we can just kinda close the tab here, but I literally want them off the page. So I'm gonna hover over the red X and just literally get rid of them because I don't need them open right now and I'm not gonna be using any of these features except for maybe vignette, but we'll, we'll show you how to open it. 
And basically now the only thing open is our raw develop module. But how do we add filters? Let's click on up here, add filters. And you'll see that there's the essentials right here. There's an AI filter, which basically is artificial intelligence. It does what it thinks is best and you just kind of boost it. It actually does a pretty amazing job on things uh, as well. So that's a really op uh, interesting option. I'm not going to use that though. We'll do it by hand. I'm just going to close that back out. But as you can see, there's a black and white conversion, sat hue, saturation, structure, tone, vignette. There's a image fixer section, dehaze, denoise, sharpening, all of these things. Uh, there's a creative section. Uh, you can add fog, kind of that warm golden hour glow, cross-processing, grain, lots of options in here. Professional, this just gets a little bit deeper into some of the professional things like curves, which allows you to add contrast uh, and brightness at the same time. So lots of options here. And then the utility down below, you know, doing bicolor toning, uh, brightness and contrast, but controlled. Um, your exposure controls, your highlight shadows. We'll talk about a couple of these to get you started too. So looking at this photograph, let's talk about the mindset of the photograph and what I would think about. Let's take you right into the image totally. Now I was in a dark bar creating these bridal party photographs at David's wedding. And I knew, knew that I needed to get light in every corner of the room in order to have it have that glow of the bar because it would be very dark otherwise. So I set up a Profoto B1 over here on a stand and I fired the strobe through a white translucent umbrella. And what white umbrellas do and why I love them is that they throw light everywhere. So the light bounces off the ceiling, the walls, everywhere in the room but it also bounces off the floor. And as you can see in this photo, it kind of lit this section of the floor where the strobe was a little bit too much. And it's leading our attention away from the subjects or emotion in the photograph. And now for processing, I want to bring everybody right in here, right back to the center. So that's what we're going to work on together to try and find a way to do. So what would I do first? Well, First and foremost, let's get our exposure close, uh, if not perfect. So we're gonna bring exposure up. I think this image could be just a little bit brighter there. Let's bring our contrast ever so slightly down. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's bring our highlights down just a little bit as well. That's just gonna bring a little, tiny more detail in her little dress and the flowers and in the lamps here. I actually went a little too far with exposure. I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. I don't want to necessarily bring up the shadows too, too much. You know what, if I do, I could do that. I could bring it up and then I'll add the contrast back in. I think that's a little bit better. And then the whites here, not going to mess with it. It's not going to do a whole lot. I'm not going to bring the, crush the blacks or bring them up or adjust the clarity. Although you certainly could, as you can see, it adds kind of a pop to that image. Really, really makes it bright and strong. So that's kind of a, a good starting point. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and crop it. So let's go to the top to our tools, click on crop. Um, and cropping, it brings up a few presets here and a few options. We can certainly free uh, crop based on what we have set up there and do whatever we wish. But what I want to do is I want to click on five by four because I want to crop this to those dimensions because that's the same as an eight by 10. And if I put these photographs online, somebody may order an eight by 10, but they may also order a five by seven. And a five by seven is gonna crop out a, a, you know, a little bit here and a little bit on the bottom. So eight by 10 is a great crop if you have images going online for people to order. So we just hit return or enter or click done up above and our image is cropped and we are already getting better. Now, what else would I do to this particular photograph? Well, as I go down to this section here, I want to definitely make some changes in here. So I'm going to click on adjustable gradient. An adjustable gradient is going to give me a couple of options. We have a brush, a radial mask, and a gradient mask. I'm going to click on gradient mask. I'm going to, I want it to happen from the bottom to the top, so I click on bottom. 
it's giving me directions already. Click and drag to draw a gradient. I'm just gonna click on the bottom and draw this up to about there. I know I want it to grade it, get darker and brighter as we go up. So I'm just going over to exposure and then see what happens. It brings that section down. But the strobe kind of washed out the, the warm vibrance over here that we see here. So I'm also gonna add some vibrance to that little part of the floor too, just so it matches ever so slightly, just a little bit better. I think we could also lead the viewers down from the top here as well. So I'm gonna click and add a second adjustable gradient here. And I'm gonna click here on brush, but I'm gonna click twice so I get to have the options. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go from here to here, click and drag, and we're just gonna bring the viewer's attention down once again by darkening here. And now I'm going from the top down, as you can see. Now the nice part is I can come back over here and move it if I want to. I can grow it if I want to as well. Uh, but basically this is kind of where we want it to be. And now we've made some pretty in, you know, good adjustments to this particular photograph and got it fairly ready. The last thing we'll add to this just because we can is I'm gonna go up to find a vignette. And the vignette is in the top essentials. I'm gonna do this post crop. And basically I'm gonna add a subtle vignette to the edges, not too much. We can adjust the size of the vignette if we need to, the feather of it. Does it happen really quickly or fall off really quickly or really subtle? That's pretty good. We can adjust, is it more square? Is it more round as well? And so those are some of the simple adjustments that I would add to get a photograph ready. Let's take a look at before and after of these images to show you this was our original as we started. Quite an intense difference in what this photograph looks like. This is the quality that I give all of my clients on all of their photographs from their weddings, their portraits. I take the time to enhance them to be the best that they can be and lead the viewer's attention exactly where I want them to look in the photograph. So that's how we kind of en enhance our photographs, a few of the basics and essentials, a little bit of the mindset, how do we save them? Let's, let's do that as well before we leave here. Up in the upper right, I'm gonna, there's two things, there's saving, and then there is exporting as well. So we're gonna export this rather than save. You'll see what I mean. I click on the top here with any luck. Oh, I have to click done, sorry. <laughs> I click on the top here and we have options that are just kind of preset built in. So you can mail, message, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Smug Mug, 500 pixels. I'm gonna click on export. I wanna save it as a JPEG. We'll save it in the same folder where the raw file is just for this purpose. We, of course, we can use long edge, short edge dimensions. We'll just save the original size. I'm not gonna add any sharpening, keeping it high uh, in terms of quality. JPEG, sRGB, it's ready to go. Click save. We have saved this finished version, the JPEG out. Now let's go, and what if I wanna save a Luminar file though? I can do that too. Go up to file, save. And now I can save this image where I can go back and have all of the edits that I've done. I can save it as Windows compatible. I can save, so it's back and forth compatible. Save the original resource. I can even save the history and go back step by step if I click on save history and then it has everything there as well. I'm not gonna save Windows compatible on Mac anyway, so I click save. And now the beauty of this is that I have this photograph, let me just hide this, saved in our folder as a JPEG, just how we cropped it and made all the enhancements. I have the Luminar file with all of the history to it, and I have my original raw file sitting right there as well. And so that is kind of a wrap on the basics and some of the essentials, some of the mindset of image processing using Luminar 2018. Again, quickly becoming one of my favorites for editing raw files non-destructively and having it all saved so I can go back if I wish. And that's a wrap on today, everybody. Hope this was helpful. Appreciate you, everybody. Have a great one.